Hi, I'm Lisa Marie. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going on a thrift flip road trip. So let's get started right now. found this little tool caddy that originally came from the Home Depot. I got it for $1.99 and I did get a discount on that. I've got these lemons and limes I ordered on Amazon and this cute scrapbook paper that I also got on Amazon. And what I'm going to do is clean off this little caddy first with the crud cutter. Then I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and I'm just going to paint the whole thing. I want it to have a nice clean white base. Once that's done, looks nice and fresh now. I'm going to cut out some of that scrapbook paper and I lost the footage, but I cut a piece for each of the sides, the shorter, tall sides, and then the two other sides. I'm just showing you a quick picture of it. I roughed up the edges with my scissor blade, which you don't get to see, but I just did that to give it a little bit nicer look. And then I also painted the top handle bright yellow and I added some lemons in there with some greenery and I made a little bow out of some Dollar Tree ribbon. And this is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like after. And I think it is so cute. It's got such a bright, fresh look and I really, really love it. Let me know what you think. Today's video is part of an open collaboration which is hosted by my friends Kay and Trish over at The Crafting Cousins along with Teresa at Our Green Acres. Both of those channels are amazing. They're very, very talented and I will have their channel links down below. There'll also be a link to the playlist and you can go see all the wonderful inspiration from everybody else's thrift flip road trip. I can't wait for you to watch it. If you are coming over from one of the other channels, thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. Back to the video. Next, I got this charger. It's made out of wood. It was $3.99, but it was originally $15.99. And I'm gonna take that same Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint, and I'm gonna paint the whole thing. And then I've got this napkin from the Dollar Tree and Mod Podge. And then I've got, of course, I've got my lemons and limes again from Amazon. I'm gonna clean this whole thing off. But first, I'm gonna put a hanger on the back because if I forget to do that, it's gonna be harder to do once I put everything on there. So I just took a little piece of rope, tied some knots, put a little ribbon over it to make it look cute. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this plate. I did two coats, but I'm gonna put stuff over the top so I wasn't too worried about it. So this napkin I thought was two ply. So there I am taking it off. It didn't say anything on the packaging. So this is something to really be aware of. Now I'm covering a little section in the middle with the Mod Podge and I'm just gonna start in the middle. And everything seems fine at this point. I left this one in here because I want you to see what happens when you don't remove all the plies and you do uh, decoupaging. So now I'm just laying down some more Mod Podge. I'm doing it little sections at a time to try to avoid, you know, a lot of wrinkles and bubbles. But do you see what happened? There was a third ply. Well, now I can't get it off without ruining the whole charger. So I'm going to go with it and lesson learned. And I'm just going to try to decorate over that stuff so it's more in the background. I've got this garland from the Target Dollar Spot for $3. Got these grass pieces, faux grass from Amazon. And I'm gonna start putting them on kind of where the bottom, the points meet together at the bottom and I'll just kind of build up from there. And I think I used three or four pieces on each side and I did cut that pick apart so I could put them where I wanted them rather than wherever the pick would kind of dictate. And you see, I'm just kind of fitting them in there and going up slightly towards, you know, the higher parts and there I, I filled it all up. So you can't see that stuff on there. And then I'm gonna take a couple of those lemons and some of pieces from that little garland I got at the Target Dollar Spot, stab them into those lemons and then hot glue the lemons on. And then I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue and get those leaves to lay down a little nicely. And then I'm gonna take some of those lemon slices and little lemon wedges and put those down. I've got a little piece of wood left over from something from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna find that really pretty yellow white polka dotted uh, scrap of paper. I'm just gonna cut a piece to match. Now I am gonna show you me doing the scissor blade roughing it up but first I want to have a color showing so I took a yellow job marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm just putting a little border around it. And then there I am taking those scissor blades. I learned this from my friend Linda at Faith Chick 777 DIY and Design. I'll put her link in my description box because she's amazing. 
and I just made some little fake stitches on there because I didn't want to sew around it like she does, but I love that look. And then I've got this amazing little two-sided tape applicator I got on Amazon, and that way I can just stick it right on there without having to use any glue and worry about wrinkles or bubbling or anything. And now I'm just gonna hand write easy peasy lemon squeezy. I just didn't get my Cricut out or look for stickers, but you certainly can. Um, I just figured for something so small, I'd be really careful and try to write nicely. It's not perfect, but just for fun. So I like the way that looks. And then once that's done, I'm going to put some little dots around all the ends in the word lemon just to give that word a little more personality. And that's it for that piece. All I'm gonna do is hot glue it right onto that spot where all the leaves are in the bottom. And that's it for this one. And I think it turned out so cute. There's the original again, very plain. And look what we have now, a cute little lemon decor wall hanger or shelf sitter. I really love this one and I hope you guys like it too. If you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It actually helps my channel quite a bit and I appreciate it. For this thrift flip, I have this sign and it's kind of old fashioned, like the 70s or 80s maybe. And it was $3, but a really nice solid piece of wood. It already had a wire hanger on it. You cannot beat that. And some holes in the back. And But it's got this hanging thing on the front and I didn't really want that. So I, my mom has this little dish towel that I got her because she really loves cats even though she doesn't have one anymore. And I said I could turn that into something to hang on her wall. So this piece is going to work for that. I'm going to take off that heart and I'll use it for in the future. I'm going to take out those two little hangers that were on there and fill them with a little bit of wood filler. And then I'm going to sand it down. And then I realized, oh, I haven't cleaned this yet. So I got my cred cutter out and I cleaned it real quick. And once that's done, I am going to paint it with my Rust-Oleum Chalk Linen White Paint, the whole thing front and back, because I do like to finish the back of my projects. And there it is, all nicely painted. It took two coats. And then I'm gonna fussy cut the cat out of this picture. And it's gonna, I just, I'm not even gonna worry about those whiskers, because I'm gonna do something to make them come back to life. I'm gonna use my Beacon Fabric Tack glue to attach it, because that's a really good glue for things like this. And it just sticks pretty quickly. You can move it around a little bit, but it, you know, you've only got a small amount of time, but it's not like hot glue where you have to stop immediately and not adjust it. So I just did it in sections to make sure that I could get it really nice and straight and not get any little wrinklies. And then I'm just gonna kind of burnish it and make sure it's laying down flat. And then I have this little piece of wood that was from something from Dollar Tree that I had cut off the excess. I'm gonna paint it with the white chalk paint again, just to have a background. And then I'm gonna cut out the words, I'm a normal cat lady, you're a crazy people person. And it had a little paw on there too. So I'm just gonna use the, the Beacon fabric tack glue again and put that down. And then I'm gonna use that same glue because it works on wood as well. And then I'm at a little bit of hot glue so it will stay right away and I can keep working on my project and put that right up on top. Now, I wanted to embellish this a little bit more. So I have this golden white twine that I got at, the, at Target. And I'm just gonna cut out pieces that match with where the whiskers would be. And I'm only gonna glue them to the part that's on the cat's face. And then I'm gonna let the rest kind of be free. So it becomes like a three-dimensional thing with those whiskers. And I think it's super cute. And then I cut out a bunch of little paws in that fabric. And I'm gonna glue each one of those down using my Fabri-Tac glue. And just kind of randomly place them around the cat. And that's it. And this one, it's really, really cute. Nice, hefty sign. And reminder, that's what it looked like first. And I love it. My mom loves it. She's already got it up in her bedroom to add to her cat collection of pictures. And she's got statues and you name it. She loves cats. She just doesn't want to have one anymore. She's had them for years. Let me know what you think of this one down in the comments. This was a really fun kind of experiment for me. So I basically thrifted these two shelves from my mom's house. She had them, but she wasn't using them and she needed a little table to hold a smokeless grill. So I had the idea of putting them together and then putting a surface on the top that would create this little table with the shelves underneath it. And I had these two extra pieces left over from a desk that I assembled, but I didn't need those pieces. So that worked out perfectly as a nice top surface. And so what I'm going to do is clean it off, of course, with my crud cutter, like I always do. It had been sitting in her apartment for quite a while and it was very dirty and dusty. Then I'm gonna take my agave chalk paint from Waverly and I'm gonna paint the whole thing. Now I'm not gonna do more than one coat because I want a little bit of the wood to show through. It'll save me distressing. 
and there it is and you can still see some of the wood little by little you know around and it's not perfect and that's what she wanted and then I had this scrap piece of wood I got at Lowe's for free and I'm just going to take my square ruler and I'm going to measure because what I need is two supports to go underneath those pieces where they come together. I'm going to take my little box miter saw and I'm just going to cut two pieces out of this that are roughly between like 11 and 11 and a half inches and there they are. And then I've got this sanding, I guess it's like a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to sand the whole thing. And then I'm going to take the agave paint so it matches the two shelf pieces. I'm only going to do the top and then all around the edges. I won't do the bottom because that's going to be attached. And I'm going to add a clear coat of polyurethane to the, the surfaces that I painted. Now we'll set that aside and I'm going to take the two pieces that I'm going to use for the very top. And you can see what they look like. And I want them to be more on the white side, but I don't mind if the grain shows through. So I'm gonna use my Kills All Purpose White Primer for that, because since I'm gonna do a clear coat over the top, it doesn't matter that it's a primer, and you can see through it if you don't do too heavy of a coat. And that's perfect, because she wanted it to look a little distressed. And I did a little underneath, because that would show you know, what goes around the outside of the shelves. Now to glue them together, I'm gonna to start with some packing tape. This is like a hack. So I'm gonna put one piece of, of the packing tape all the way down the seam and then four little ones across. That holds it in place so they stay even. And then you'll see in a second here how I'm gonna add the wood glue. I'm gonna turn this piece over now and it does bend in the middle as you can see. And then what I'm going to do is take my Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. You can get that on Amazon, but I also got it at Walmart. And I'm gonna add some right in there, but see, you can just fold it like that, put the glue in, and it holds the whole thing in place, and you can do it with one hand, holding it in one hand with the glue, which I thought was the best way to do it. Now I'm gonna close it and you know push it together very tight, and then I'm just gonna take a paper towel and clean off the excess glue, and then I will seal all that with the polyurethane. So now you can see those two pieces that I added as supports under the shelves. That will hold the two pieces together under two of the shelves so that I can attach the top and it won't move on me. And it all matches and you can't even see it because it's on the underneath. So there is the piece assembled. Now, by the way, each one of those pieces were not even. So if you see gaps, I couldn't do anything about it because whoever made this originally, it was handmade, it wasn't even. So I took some screws and the two I already made the holes and I pre-drill holes and I just couldn't hold everything in film, so you won't see me doing the drilling. So reminder, here's what they look like before, and here's what it looks like now. Now, I just styled it outside with some decor on it to take a picture, but at her house, she's putting that smokeless grill. She loves it, it fits perfectly in her space, and it worked out great. This piece I also got was $3.99, and it was brand new in the box, and it was $14.99. I'm going to take my agave chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to paint all of those little blocks around and I just used a blade if I got a little drop on the middle. I'm going to take my black chalkboard paint from, I got that at um, Dollar Tree, and I'm going to fill in with that fine art brush all those little paws and then I'm going to take a sharpie and I'm going to go in and fill in the indentation for the words where it says cat's rule. Now I'm going to take my white chalk paint from Mustolian and I'm going to paint that sign including the, the stand of it. And then I'm gonna take my Antique Wax by Waverly and go over the base of the sign so it'll look like a piece of wood. And then I'm gonna use the marker again because it says no dogs allowed, but that was a little too thick for that one. So I went back in with a finer art brush to get into the, the deeper part of the indentations. And then I just lightly put a little bit of the white over the top and that kind of fixed it. And now you can just read the words and you don't see all that excess. I'm gonna take the pumpkin, the maze, and then a little bit of the white chalk paint to I'm gonna blend the cat out. So I'm gonna do the whole cat in orange, and then I'm gonna start adding some yellow while the orange is still wet and kind of blend it, making like a tabby looking cat. So I'm not being perfect with this at all, I'm just kind of dabbing it all around. And once I get all the orange on, I'm gonna go back over while that's still wet with a little bit of the white, and that gives this cat that kind of tabby look where it would have like kind of orange, yellow, and white, and I misted it with my um, water just to make sure it was wet enough to move that white around because I really wasn't trying to paint it anything solid. And you can see here, it really did the trick. And I see how I just put those little lines on and then I kind of expanded them just a little bit, but I certainly did not cover this cat with the white at all. 
And then I go in with a green jot marker from the Dollar Tree and I make little dots for where the eyes are. And then I use a black marker to do like the whiskers and in between the little paws just to give it a little more definition. I'm really happy with how all this effort went. It, you know, it's just a lot of time to just go over all the layers, but it wasn't like a big piece. So I actually thought it came out really, really cute. And I'm glad I messed with it like that. It was an experiment. I really am not a painter or an artist, but I've seen people do this and I thought, well, I could try it. So I encourage you to try new things. And you know, what's the worst that can happen? You have to paint it over again, no big deal. But he did come out really cute. And then I'm gonna take my polyurethane, I'm gonna do a whole solid coat over the whole thing and just kind of seal it in, because I did use marker. So there it is before, and there it is after. Now I didn't put a picture in, because it's for my mom, and I'll let her put a picture in there. I think it turned out so cute, and she loves it. In fact, she's already put a picture in there. So let me know what you guys think. And now for one last look at all of my projects today from the Thrift Flip Road Trip. Don't forget there's a playlist down in the description box. You're definitely going to want to watch all of these videos. And also check out the host channels. And I just appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching. You are truly a blessing to me. I have a couple other videos up here on the screen. I hope you'll click one of them next. And if you do, I'll see you there. Bye!